Hello, today I'm going to show you how to use the new intertwine feature. With this feature you will be able to create overlapping effects in no time. In our first example we have several rectangle shapes that we would like to intertwine. To do this first make sure everything is selected. Next go to Object and choose Intertwine. This option is only available with the new 2023 updates. And select Make. You will notice that your cursor now has a lasso symbol next to it. Now create an enclosed path around the sections of the objects that you wish to intertwine. While drawing a path be sure to include the entire area and don't cut corners. If our path doesn't include the whole section that we wish to intertwine, we will get this undesired effect. To correct this, first press the Ctrl and Z keys on your keyboard to go back one step and then go to Object again, Intertwine and this time choose Edit. Now make sure the path includes all the corners and keep creating the remaining paths. When we go to layers you will notice we've got a new intertwine object. If we decide to make changes it's best to release the intertwine object first. To do this select everything and then go to object, intertwine and choose release. And we are back to where we started. Let's keep the intertwine object for now. Adding an effect to an object after we use the intertwine feature is possible, but it can be a big hassle. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we would like to add a gradient to our red stripe. First select the intertwine object and then go to object and choose expand. This creates a group with lots of clip groups. Each clip group consists of a compound clipping path and a couple subgroups. Let's select this red rectangle group and add a gradient to it. I'm going to create a simple black and red gradient. Apply the gradient to the fill and delete the stroke. You will notice that the gradient was only applied to the clipping path. To add the same gradient to the other part of our stripe, first select this clip group. Then go to Object and choose Ungroup. Now open this clip group layer. Select the corresponding rectangle and apply the same gradient to it. Now do the same with this clipping path. Open the clip group where this path is located, select the red rectangle and apply the same gradient to it. So as you see it's possible but it takes way too much time. If you are trying to apply an effect to your artwork, I would highly suggest doing it before using the intertwine feature. We can also apply the intertwine effect directly to letters without outlining them first. Let's rearrange these three letters. And like we did in our previous example, first select everything and then go to Object, Intertwine and choose Make. Now create an enclosed path where you want the letters to overlap. If you create a path and nothing happens, hover your cursor over the highlighted area and now right click and choose a desired position. I'm going to send it to the back. 
and we've got another intertwine object in the layers panel. If we open the sublayers of this layer and select the letter O for example, we can now move it. However, we can't move it beyond the path's boundary that we have made. So, it is best to have the position of your letters at the correct place right from the start. If we would like to add a drop shadow effect, for example, after we use the intertwine feature, we might run into this problem. Let's undo it. To do it right, first select your letters, now add a drop shadow effect, rearrange the letters, select all of them, now go to Object, Intertwine, Make and create enclosed paths like we did before. Right-click on the highlighted area and choose a desired position. If we have more than two paths crossing in one area, like in this example, first select everything, go to Object, Intertwine, Make, and now create an enclosed path around this entire area. To bring the yellow part to the front, for example, first hover your mouse over the yellow path and when you see the thick highlighted line, right-click on it and then choose a desired option. Let's bring this red shape to the front. So like we did previously, first create an enclosed path around all three objects Next, hover your cursor over the red path, right-click and choose a desired option. Now create the remaining paths. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.